Hold on. Hold up. Okay. Well, that's not gonna. That's. Let me. No. I don't know what we can. Let's do that. We got a big one here today. And what we have here is a new LG monitor. A lot of you probably know, I've reviewed many LG monitors before, and no, this one's not sponsored. They didn't send this to me or anything. I paid for this big guy with my own money. And it was a hefty, hefty piece of change right there. I think I got this thing for 800 bucks, and I believe it's still on sale right now. Regular price is around, I think, 13 or 14, something like that. But again, I've had my eyes on this monitor for a long time. And catching at 800 bucks, sure, that's still a lot of money, but it's a fantastic deal for what you get here. And the model we have today is the LG 34 GK 950F-B Ultra Wide Gaming Monitor. That is a mouthful. And it took me a couple tries to actually get that right on the camera here. Today is the LG 650F-B. LG CK 650F-B. GK 650F-B. 34 GK 950 f Dash F dash dash B. And the model we have today is the LG 34 GK. Now a couple quick specs about the model before going to pop it open and everything. Now it is a 34 inch 12 by 9 aspect ratio ultra wide monitor here. Very big. It is 3440 by 1440p. It is 144 hertz with one millisecond MBR motion blur reduction, but it's actually a five millisecond gray to gray. And yes, it is HDR. It's HDR 400, which is I believe the lowest certification you can get for HDR. But honestly, which I'll show you here in a minute once we plug it up and get some games on it and everything. Um, I have an HDR with a thousand nit uh, TV, 4K TV out there and everything, you know, which looks great. You're sitting so far away from the TV and everything, and it literally looks nice and vibrant, right? HDR is fantastic. It really is. But honestly, on a monitor that you're sitting right in front of, which again, I'm kind of jumping ahead here. If I had a monitor with a thousand uh, nit brightness for HDR, my eyes would be burning. And it also has FreeSync 2 on it, which allows it to communicate with the HDR right there. Now, I also read up on it that this monitor, as far as the FreeSync, it does work with NVIDIA cards as well. Don't hold me to that. I use AMD cards, but I did read up quite a bit on it, and everyone states that it does work with G-Sync as well. But as far as in your box, as you see, you get an external power brick here, and it's quite a big one, actually. You get a display port right here, an HDMI, this little clip, which is going to bottom monitor, I'll show you later, you can put your mouse cord in or something like that. You get this for the back of your stand, and then over here we have our stand and then our adjustable arm, as you can see with the red accents on it. And then of course we have our monitor here. As far as input, you have two HDMIs, your power, headphone jack right here, couple USB ports, and then your display port right over here. Now this monitor is vase mountable, as you can see right here, and these are just right underneath these stands. So you don't have to remove this or anything, they just stay right there. Now as far as the stand and the arm itself, very easy to attach. As you can see, we got the square and the stand, and then within the arm right here. Bam, you're just going to slide right in there, attach to each other, and then you have that screw already built in on the bottom. Just twist, tighten it up, and you are all set. Now, one other thing I want to show you about the stand, which is real cool. All the LG gaming monitors I have tested has had this feature. As you can see, you got these couple teeth right on top of the stand here, and that's where it's going to mount in right here. Now, you don't have to remove your vase screws or anything like that. Just leave them right in there. And this guy's just going to come simply in, bam, and snap right in. That's it. No screws, no one doing anything, no nothing. It just snaps in. And it's easy to get it off. Bam, just push this little lever right here, and it's out. I mean, how awesome is that? Super easy, and it's incredibly durable. As you see, I can lift this thing up laying flat like this, and it is not budging one bit. So it's in there very secure as well. Now, also in our box, we had this little deal as well, which are kind of like a little uh, wire gather for the back of the monitor. It's just going to clip right on the back here, and then you can route all your wires right through that, keep it nice and organized. And then as far as underneath the monitor here, as you can see, you have this little button here, and this is how we're going to navigate through the menus, as well as your power button right there, which we're going to go through the menu here shortly. But again, that's what I will be controlling the menu through. Now, one other thing, as you see these little notches underneath the monitor, you have one on each end of the monitor, on the far right and the far left, and then in the middle, that's where that little clip is that I showed you earlier, where you can put your mouse cord into it or anything. Again, you can put that on any side of the monitor there, and then hold your mouse cords there for you. And also, as far as your stand, you can go up with it, all the way up here, or all the way down. You also have some swivel to the left, 
swivel to the right right there and you can also tilt it forward and back and it stays really really steady nice balanced stand and everything not much shake or anything and again it feels incredibly solid and it moves very very smooth on a stand now one thing I want to show you before we actually plug it up and get some game testing get a look see at and everything and some of you that have been here for a while you're probably questioning saying hey Techni man I thought you hated curved monitors as I have the video stated I hate curved monitors <laughs> right so anyways so you're probably wondering man why did I get this right but if you watch that video actually within that video there I actually talk about wanting to try an ultra wide monitor because those ones I was testing around 24 inches I think I even tested a 27 inch right so again kind of think about that you got to cut this monitor almost in half to get to that size and those do really throw me off again with the picture just being bent on that very small uh, monitor right there just really threw me off it almost made me nauseous sometimes again that's probably just me but I really did not enjoy it it was not immersive or anything again it just felt bent bent the colors and everything and it just yeah, again, being on that small little palette right there, it made the colors feel different for me from the sides and then into the middle. Me personally, I just didn't like it. But again, as I stated in that video, I always wanted to try an ultra wide and see if they can kind of steer me the other way. And it really did. And that's what I want to show you here is kind of the curvature. It's so small and so mild across this nice wide monitor. That's 34 inch, but it's not this super tall, massive monitor. Again, it's just spread apart perfectly. As you can see the curvature right here in this view, it's so mild and it really just doesn't really bend the picture that much. It just kind of wraps you into it and gives you this extra immersion right here. You know what? Let's just plug it up, get some games on it, and I want to show you. All right, so first off, I'd like to show you some of our menu options. And I'm gonna be controlling all of this by that little button I showed you on the bottom of the monitor right there. So first off, you can press it in. And again, that will be your power button as well. But you have a couple quick options here. As you can see, you can go right, bam, right down here, select your input right here. Press it again, it will back you out. Then you can go down here and just select a quick preset right there that you have. And again, that's just pretty much a quick option right there. And again, as well as your power button. All right, so as far as our settings up here, as you can see on the top of the screen right there, that's gonna show pretty much what you have set. Pop right over here in game mode, which again, you can adjust right in that quick menu we just looked at. But these are just some of your presets right here. I'm not a really big fan of presets, but honestly, a game or two on this one looked pretty stinking crisp. I went in and just tweaked a little bit of it and adjusted it right there. Come right down here, you can get game adjust. This is where you can adjust everything right there. Again, there's one millisecond second MBR motion blur reduction I do not like it what that does is put a black frame back there that's my little uh, example right there is my finger but it puts a black frame back there that will just kind of make it pop in and out me personally I really don't like it it's just fake one millisecond I can honestly see it flicker a little bit but again that could just be me I, I never use it in any of my LG monitors but hey it has it you have a free sync extended basic and off now the free sync range when on extended is 55 by 144 so again I just leave that on right there some bit uh, black stabilizer your response time crosshair if you want to cheat it'll just put that right in the middle of your screen right there so you can cheat for that and you got your picture adjustment which is your basic brightness and all that stuff right there if you want to get real technical get in there and adjust it and again I like coming in here sometimes while in game a lot of people always ask hey man what's the best color settings and I think it's gonna be different for everybody you know what I mean so again just get in your game a solo game or whatever you're playing just a private match get in there in your basic setting what oh, we just lost it and then adjust the stuff while you're just out looking at the scenery and jumping around and stuff because your settings are gonna be different than mine or so and so who else is you know um, right down here you got your input and all that stuff and then just your basic stuff you got all this smart energy stuff and all this stuff will be on go on and just click all that off because it'll just dull down your picture a little bit and stuff like that now one thing I wish was on this uh, menu right here which I can't seem to find uh, usually it's right down here the OSD timeout and stuff is usually what's on the monitors but I don't see it on this one here and it was really a stinker because honestly whenever you get in here to uh, picture adjustment and everything you're adjusting your brightness and your colors and all that stuff this uh, screen ends up popping out on me and I, I just wish I can keep it up there and turn it off so it always stays up there so again whenever I'm in there you know detail adjusting my colors and everything it'll always stay up rather than popping off again it's kind of minor but it's just one thing I wish it had. All right, so now real quick, one thing I wanna show you right here, Riley, got the lights out and everything. As you can see, I got the blacks right up top here, the Techni uh, logo right here in the middle with the white, and then right down here, the blacks. And while I got the lights out right here, I wanna show you there's just about no light bleed at all, none whatsoever. Now, if you get at an angle, you kinda of get a little bit of that kind of fade, a little bit of that TN effect, kind of, you know what I mean? It's nothing drastic by any means, because honestly, we're gonna be looking straight at it. But again, if you're looking at that angle, you kinda of get a little bit of a fade, but again, straight on right here, 
crispy blacks very crispy whites right here and i mean just look at the reds on the blacks with the whites right there again going into the black borders i mean this thing is crisp and incredibly solid now one thing you want to make sure you do right when you get the monitor after you plug it up and everything is make sure you go into your settings right here go into system and then go right down here to display and then click on advanced display settings here and it'll show you what you have set up as again i got 3440 by 1440 144 hertz 10 bit but again if it doesn't say that usually when you plug it in it'll be right around i think 55 if i'm not mistaken but again click right down here on display adapter properties and it's gonna pull up this little box right here click on monitor and this is where you can select your refresh rate so again just pop it right down there to 144 and hit apply and you will be good to go now one thing i want to show you which i'm sure is on your mind like man that thing's too big you know what i mean i mean the camera doesn't even give it justice right now but it is big it's more wide rather than tall because honestly i gotta lift it up a, a bit whenever i'm playing compared to my previous 34 inch i was using but again it's not like this drastic big where it's kind of like you're like all over the screen you know what i mean it's pretty perfect but the game i want to show you which really kind of uh really puts it out there and shows you the size difference between a basic or a regular monitor compared to an ultra wide right here is destiny 2 so this game is just the perfect example because again i used to i played the mess out of destiny on a regular tv a regular monitor and now the ultra wide so i can really tell the differences of okay what's the difference that i'm going to notice with an ultra wide here but it's really cool because they kind of like line it out for you if you see these little white lines going right there and then right down right here you can see it pretty good right here there's that line and here's this line over there that's pretty much your basic monitor and that's what you're going to see so again with the ultra wide you get all this extra over here. You never would have saw the rest of this ring over here or this other bit out there. And it goes further within the games. Like, let's let's pop into one here. So let me show you right here when we're popping into the tower. Before, it would kind of be cut off like this. Now you get all this extra bit right over there and over here. And again, talking about that immersion with ultra wides, that's what it is. It just kind of, it doesn't like suck you in because it's curved. It just gives you that extra bit of environment right there. And you have all this extra going on around you, which is just... I mean, gosh, I, I really don't think the camera can give it justice here, but it is just absolutely phenomenal. All right, so now one other thing I want to show you while we're still in Destiny 2 right here is the HDR effect, right? Because this scene right here is, you know, again, I get into my settings and I sit in one stagnant place and I start adjusting and tweaking my settings, which is what I recommend you doing with any monitor, actually. But anyways, this scene right here really kind of makes that HDR stand out. Again, the brightness only being 400 on this thing, which is the lowest, I think, uh, qualification you get to get that HDR stamp right there. And again, I think it's fantastic for a monitor that, bam, I'm sitting right in front of. If it was across the room, no, I'd probably want it higher, you know what I mean? But again, I think at a thousand uh, nit brightness right there for HDR, I just personally wouldn't be able to handle it. Again, the 400 right here is just bright enough. But let me show you this effect right here as far as HDR on this monitor. All right, so what I want you to focus on right here is kind of the planet. And look at all the debris over here and that beam of light right in here with some of that other detail within the cracks and everything. Just kind of focus on that right there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into settings here. Where we go? Then we go to video. We have HDR all the way down on the bottom. We're going to put it on. Apply changes. Number one, you saw the menu just, bam, just really brightened up big time, right? So uh, anyways, let's back out. And now kind of just look at that right there. Do you see how just blurry it's? Oh, I got to like, my guy's got to back up some. It's ridiculous. Like, I do not like it at all especially on uh destiny 2 here it just makes like just look back here it's not just like your this looks like blur on the screen it almost cuts everything out and just makes it incredibly bright right there which again is the effect you get with hdr now over here it looks great as far as the light right there and the uh beam coming off there or up on the uh, foliage up here the hdr looks fantastic but as far as the scenery off in a distance right here especially with this bam smack dab in your face it's not good like not at all again back with hdr off and look at all the detail we get again i mean it looks fantastic with that hdr off so why i wanted to show you that right there as far as the hdr effect and again destiny 2 just kind of showed it the best is why i wanted to give you that example again i like hdr i really do i love it on my uh, tv out there but i think on a pc monitor i think it's just overkill again on any monitor I'm not saying it's bad on this one i mean it does what it's supposed to do but again with hdr being smack dab in front of your face I just don't like it. Again, I love it on my TV where it's off in a distance in the living room, but right here in front of my face, 
I just don't like it. And it's not just Destiny 2. You really get a really nice HDR effect in racing games. That's where I noticed the best. Say Forza, for example, stuff like that. It reflected off the car and everything, and the lights, you know, on the dark track and everything. That's where HDR looks really nice. The sun in the background reflecting off puddles and stuff. It looks fantastic. It really does. But again, I don't recommend HDR on any monitor, whether it be 1,000 or 400. I just... I don't like the effect being smack dab in your face. Let's check out some other games though. All right, so now let's go over and check out some Fortnite right here. Now, I'm late to the show on this game. I don't know why, but I am incredibly hooked on this game right now. I mean, in season two, I dabbled with it a little bit with some friends uh, back in the days. Never really got into it, but I am absolutely hooked and I can't stand the building. I really can't. I'm getting off track. I'm talking about Fortnite and not the monitor here. But anyways, what I wanna do, well, we got a little bit of a night mode here. But let's go to look at some trees and everything. Just look at everything you're catching in here. Does it give you an advantage, you might be thinking of, right? Because again, I can be sitting right here and I'm gonna see these guys over here, right? And still be able to kind of look at that uh, view. And again, yeah, I push it back on my desk. So no, I'm not panning the monitor. That might be one thing you're asking. Well, man, I can't keep track of all that right there. Here, look at this, for example. You got the whole map and then everything else outside of it. It's like, wow, it covers so much. But no, you don't gotta pan the monitor right there. Yeah, I did scooch it back on my desk. I don't got it right in front of my face, like if I'm using a 24 inch or something, you know what I mean? but it just covers it perfectly, it really does. All right, so now we're in a day setting here. Now just check out those colors. I mean, look at the greens. I mean, it's just so vibrant and so crisp. No pixelation, no nothing like that. Butter stinking smooth. I mean, it is just gorge. I got all my settings on high, uh, some of them on epic here. And as you can see, my, my frame rate, my high is getting 128. I'm kind of bouncing around the hundreds and kind of all over the place when you're flying in, but that's just Fortnite in general, right? But as you can see, I'm jumping right around, uh, staying around, I'd say 120 or something like that, you know? But again, I mean, as far as with these bright colors, that's I think that's what I really hooked on this game is just the colors, the vibrancy of it. It's just so fun, the bright colors and everything. Again, it's just such a... Uh, such a blast playing this and it's so fun on this gigantic monitor. I mean, just, just check that out while we're flying in right there. Look at everything we're seeing. Like, wow, looks so good. Now also talking about that brightness right there of this monitor being an IPS and everything. Of course, HDR is off right now. I'm just on a basic uh, web page, you know what I mean? But I got my lights kind of dim, just as kind of how I usually play. It's just like this, I got my basic ceiling fan light on, nothing else, you know? And, and the monitor is just, it is bright, it really is. I'm used to like TN or VA panels, which I mean, they're great. Not saying anything bad about them by any means, but this is really the first true IPS gaming monitor that I have used. And let me tell you what, this thing is so vibrant. It probably took me about at least the first week to get used to the brightness of it because it was just so bright and so potent, but everything is crisp. Again, I know the camera can't pick this stuff up, but as far as the Google right there, I mean, the colors are so stinking solid. Everything's butter smooth. Like the reds are just, I mean, every single color within this guy is just absolutely beautiful. All right, so all in all, my take on the LG monitor right here, and I wanna answer a couple questions that I think you're probably asking. Number one, the price point. Is it worth what I paid for it, 800 bucks? Regular MSRP, I believe, again, is around 12 or 14. 800 bucks, I mean, this thing is an absolute steal. Hands down, don't even question it. If it's still that price, at the time of me posting this video, get it, no questions asked. If you're considering it, don't consider it anymore. It's completely worth it. At regular MSRP, yeah, I still think it's worth it. I mean, I've been holding out a long time on this monitor just because, I mean, that MSRP, that, I mean, that's a pretty heavy price tag, right? Yes, you're getting value in, in everything built within this that makes it worth that price right there, but that, that's a lot of money for any of us, you know what I mean? But again, at that 800 bucks, I mean, what a steal. Now, one other question you might be asking, what about that five millisecond gray to gray? Is that still good? And let me tell you, five milliseconds grade to grade is fantastic. I've used plenty of them that have been one millisecond on TN panels to threes to fives. I think at the highest I've ever really used was about a seven, which was still perfectly fine. But comparing a five to a one, I mean, you're gonna be very, very hard to tell the difference of that, you know what I mean? Maybe you're some professional gamer that's in front of a monitor every single second of the day, every day, you know, then maybe you'll be able to tell it. But again, me testing so many different monitors from one millisecond up to, again, this five right here, 
I mean, you can't tell a single difference. I mean, it is crispy smooth. The other thing you might be asking, man, is it just too big? Like, is it too big? Now, I don't have a gigantic desk by any means, but yes, I did have to scooch it back to the furthest of my desk, and I had to let the back little leg kind of stick off a little bit. Because again, if you pull it up close to you, yes, you will be panning a little bit. But if you get it about three, three and a half feet away from you, I mean, you are set. You're not panning by any means. You can just kind of see the edge of the screen right there, and it really just opens up up that much more and you get that much more environment with into your game right there and it's just again it's an experience you have to try now one thing I can tell you speaking on that size right there one thing I did notice like for example me doing videos and a lot of research using some OBS and stuff so I'll use a secondary monitor every now and then and that's one thing I did notice like sometimes panning across that whole mo I use a very low DPI uh, by the way usually around 400 500 DPI right so I'm gonna take my mice and kind of go at it quite a bit sometimes I'm like all right let me just crank this DPI up so I can swipe across the monitor in one smooth motion so you will kind of notice that a little bit again depending on your dpi right there also within game sometimes you just catch yourself kind of flinging a little bit more you know what i mean so you might adjust your dpi a little bit again me after using it for a solid week and really just playing the heck out of it for quite a bit you know i got really used to it and i still keep my dpi at the exact same settings the one time or the only uh, situation that I noticed myself wanting to increase it is again when I'm using a secondary monitor and I go, go back and forth from each monitor right there. And the one last thing I'm sure you're asking, as I stated in the beginning, man, you're just saying all this great stuff about this monitor because you got it sponsored or LG sent you this monitor. And they did not. They did not sponsor us. They did not send it to me. I spent my own money on this. I sure wish LG would send me something to review because I love their stuff. I've been using so much of this stuff. So LG, if you're out there watching, hey, come on, hit me up. Let's uh, let's work together here. But seriously, I just love the LG monitors. I mean, I've tested so many and again, I've bought all of them with my own money and I just love them. I've had great results with them. They all have held up very well, you know what I mean? So, I mean, why change? So wait, let me know down in the comments if you use the LG 34G F. I forgot the name already. I forgot the name. But anyways, let me know if you use this LG monitor and what you think about it or if you're looking at picking it up. Because again, I, I put my name all over this thing. This thing is a blast to use and one of my favorite uh, PC upgrades I have done here. But hey, thank you so much for stopping by and watching this one. I hope I was able to help you out a little bit. If you got any other questions, definitely ask down in the comments. Follow me on Twitter at thetechni1. And I respond to those a lot quicker than the comments right there because I always got my notifications Also, definitely follow me on there. If you got any questions, just feel free to ask. But Hey, I highly appreciate you stopping by and watch this one. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for some future tech videos. And I hope I catch you in the next one. Bye now.